MIG welding is very easy to learn and a MIG welder is a must have in auto restoration or any type of metal fab, which is probably why you're considering purchasing a MIG. If you're not sure exactly what you need, I'm going to help you select the right machine for your job. Today we're going to take a look at the MIG-135, MIG-175, and MIG-250. If you're looking for a multi-process machine that will not only allow you to MIG weld, but also give you the option of stick and TIG welding, those units are also available at Eastwood. But today, I'm going to stick to MIG welders. And if at any time you want to visit Eastwood to check out these units, all you have to do is click or tap the button in the top corner of the video screen. Your first two concerns are most likely what thickness of metal can it weld and what voltage do I need to run the machine. You may also want to know the duty cycle and whether it has the ability to connect a spool gun to weld aluminum. You also want to make sure it uses common consumables that you can get at a welding supply store, not just from the manufacturer, which is an advantage of these Eastwood machines. And make sure the welder has a good warranty. If the manufacturer doesn't have confidence in the unit, why should you? Eastwood offers a three-year warranty on all these units. In fact, you can even test them for 60 days with our money-back guarantee, so you know we have confidence in these machines. Let's start with the thickness of steel each will weld. The MIG-135 will weld 24 gauge to 3 16 making it ideal for sheet metal work, which is perfect for patch panels and floor pans on a car. The MIG-175 will weld 24 gauge to quarter inch, making it great for auto restoration. If you're buying one machine, and especially if you're working on cars, this is a great one to have because it covers nearly all the work you'll be doing from thin metal to working on frames. Now the MIG-250 will weld 20 gauge to half inch thick steel. It can still do thin metal, but where this machine really excels is in its ability to weld thick steel. So to summarize, if you're basing your decision on the thickness of metal it can weld, the MIG-135 is great for sheet metal, the MIG-175 is a unit you want for doing just about everything up to quarter inch. The MIG-250 is a unit you need if you want a more industrial machine that can weld thick steel. Now let's see what voltage you need to power them. The MIG-135 operates on standard 120 volts. The MIG-175 on 240 volts, and the MIG-250 can operate on either 120 or 240 with a supplied adapter cord. On 120 volts, the MIG-250 will weld up to 1 8 of an inch, which is nice because you can still use the machine if you're in a location where only 120 volts is available. In fact, because the MIG-250 is an inverter style unit, it can also be run by a generator, making it a mobile unit that's great if you need to take it out on the road or to the track. So if you're looking for a unit to haul with you and connect to a generator, the 250 is for you. Now, you may also want the ability to weld aluminum. All three units have the option to connect a spool gun. The MIG-175 actually comes with a spool gun to weld aluminum up to a quarter inch. The MIG-135 and 250 both have the option to connect a spool gun, which will allow you to weld aluminum up to one eighth of an inch on the MIG-135 and one quarter of an inch on the MIG-250. Now let's discuss consumables. All three units use common consumables, which means you can get them at Eastwood or at most welding supply stores. The MIG-135 and 175 both use Tweco-style consumables, and the MIG-250 uses Binzel-style consumables. All three machines have flux score capabilities, which is nice if you're welding outside or in a location where you don't have a gas bottle. But for the cleanest, nicest welds, you'll want to use shielding gas when you can. Let's check out duty cycle, which is the length of time the machine can operate in a given amount of time. As an example, if it's a 30% duty cycle, like the MIG-175, it can operate for three minutes and then needs to cool for seven. If 30% doesn't seem like much, hold a pen and move it across your desk like you're welding for three minutes. It will probably seem like a long time. The duty cycle is 20% at 90 amps for the MIG-135 and 30% at 130 amps for the MIG-175, which are both plenty to get the job done on your projects, especially auto restoration. Now, the MIG-250 has an impressive 60% duty cycle at the full 250 amps, which is great for more industrial welding where you'll be using the machine for long periods of time welding thick steel. Another great feature on all three of these units is the infinite adjustability of the voltage and wire speed that really allows you to dial the unit in perfectly for the best welds. Many machines just have a few settings that you click through rather than a smooth dial that lets you select an exact spot between those settings. This feature is really useful for thin metal. So I hope this helped you select the best MIG welder for your jobs. If you're just starting to weld, or if you're looking for one unit that's going to cover most things on a restoration, I recommend the MIG-175. If nearly all of your work will be thin steel and sheet metal, I suggest the MIG-135. If you want the ability to weld thick steel for long periods of time or connect it to a generator, the MIG-250 is the unit for you. And remember, if you're just learning how to MIG weld, Eastwood has a lot of videos on our YouTube channel and Eastwood.com to show you how to set up your welder and begin welding. 
plus videos on troubleshooting as well as tips and tricks to improve your skills. For more information on Eastwood and MIG welders or to get yours today, you can click or tap the button in the top corner of this video or follow the links that appear on the screen.